Good morning, morning, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. On behalf of the Commander, Marine Corps Installations Command, Major General David W. Maxwell, welcome to today's change of command ceremony for Colonel Michael L. Brooks, who will take this command to Colonel Jenny A. Colby. At this time, we would like to introduce and acknowledge our many distinguished guests. Lieutenant General Olson, Lieutenant General Heppel, Sergeant Major Loss, Lieutenant General Flynn, Major General Maxwell, Sergeant Major Hammond, Brigadier General Sullivan, Sergeant Major Hensley, Goodyear, Sergeant Major Cook, Sergeant Major Lutz, Sergeant Major Dorsey, Sergeant Major Singley, and also in attendance is our 16th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Carlton Kent, retired. Next we have Lieutenant General Sharadi, United States Marine Corps, retired. Lieutenant General Rourke, United States Marine Corps, retired. Major General Lukeman, United States Marine Corps, retired. SES Adams, SES Strobel, Secretary and Major General, United States Marine Corps retired, Crenshaw. The Honorable Cortez, from Congresswoman Abigail Spangaro's staff, we have District Direct Supervisor, District Director Christy Black and Miss Mackenzie Heidelmark. Supervisor Bailey from Prince William County, Chair Jefferson, Prince William County. Supervisor Gary, Stafford County. Vice Chairwoman Allen, Stafford County. And Dr. Richmond Hill, Provost at NVCC. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party. The invocation for today's ceremony will be given by Lieutenant Daniels, United States Navy, followed by the National Anthem and honors to the Commander. Let us pray. To the one, our Creator, who puts down and sets up. Today, we honor a man who has led this complex and multifaceted organization through times of plenty and times of lack through life-defining experiences and those that are part and parcel to what it means to lead at the crossroads of the Marine Corps. Colonel Michael L. Brooks, a man for whom the sentiments like teamwork, accountability, leadership, and empowerment are not punchlines, but watchwords by which he measures himself and those in his charge. Because he believes in the strength of, his, of this village and his focus on partnership, Marine Corps installation, National Capital Region, Marine Corps Base Quantico has enjoyed prosperity in austere times, success in the face of glaring obstacles, and accomplishment of mission objectives despite impossible odds. In his preparation for his next assignment, give back to Colonel Brooks and his family the time and attention given to us. Make his time with Michaela, Donovan, and Star Crescent even more meaningful as they continue to experience life together. Give Colonel Brooks and his wife Star sweet moments of love and affection. Make his path straight as you continue to light his path by your providential grace. We acknowledge the sacrifices and support of his family who have stood by him and shared in his service. As Colonel Colgate prepares to take the helm of this storied and historic place, help us remind her that she is not alone. She has been brought here for such a time as this. Let this truth give her unshakable confidence. We pray for her wisdom to meet the often daunting challenges of leadership in this domain, courage in the face of uncertainty, and compassion for those in her charge. Let our collective prayers bind her with faith and trust to the guidance of Sergeant Major Brown and the leaders under her authority. May theirs be a relationship governed by deep trust, respect, and truth. As she looks to the future, give her vision beyond that of human sight and faith that makes the unseen things visible. Leadership is a noble undertaking, but is also a burden that is never indeed born alone. It is shared by our children who quietly take on more responsibilities in caring for themselves and for each other. It is shared by our parents who support our life's work despite their misgivings about the claims that our duty as warriors takes of our time moral faculties, and bodies. It is shared by our friends, who because of their love for us, make the phone calls and moments of support in a joke shared, or a pain honored, their personal and unending mission of sacrifice for us. So, to Colonel Goldgate's children, Jack, Chase, and Josh, remind them of how the strength they have shown in their loving willingness to forfeit their comfort and friendships, have shown their loving, and to bear those losses uh, repeatedly with grace and in support of Colonel Colgate's sacred duty have given her steadfast, making her, make, made her steadfast and courageous. 
May they see her success as their own, make their home a sanctuary untouched by the tumult of this world. To Colonel Colgate's parents, Ron and Jean Willett, you have raised a woman of deep character and great strength. May they see their legacy and overflow with pride at the sacrifices and power of what their love has made. To Colonel Colgate's friends, their ability to hold space for and honor her needs in all things great and small have given Colonel Colgate the clarity to find joy in it all. May they continue to find laughter that heals, encourages, empowers, and enriches. In the name of the one whose timing and provisions are perfect, amen. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the commander, Marine Corps Installations Command, Major General David W. Maxwell. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. In the heart of our nation, there lies a stronghold of resilience and dedication. It's the Marine Corps' most unique and complex installation. This is Quantico. It's the center of the Marine Corps' innovation and education, home to 27 tenant commands, all of which wield global influence. Its mission is to train and develop the officer corps, improve and procure advanced equipment, and to test and develop innovative warfighting concepts. Seemingly ordinary people across Quantico achieve incredible feats for those missions. Often, they operate within their own spaces. Together, they make Quantico possible. Thanks to their collective efforts, they positively impact the corps and neighboring communities around the base. From training and warfighting concepts to logistics and policy procurement, those thousands of base personnel, active duty service members, and civilian Marines positively direct the future of the Marine Corps. This is Quantico, the crossroads of the Marine Corps, the heart of no better friend, no worse enemy. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the commanding officer of Marine Corps Installations National Capital Region, Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia, Colonel Michael L. Brooks. Now joining Colonel Brooks in the reviewing area is Colonel Colgate. Sergeant Major. Deliver the colors to the commanding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual passing of command. The battle colors of a Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Colonel Brooks. By accepting the colors, Colonel Colgate accepts command and confirms her total commitment to the Marines, sailors, civilians, and families in her command. Sergeant Major Mike Brown is delivering the colors to the commanding officer. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Colonel Michael L. Brooks. Subject, relinquishment of command. Effective 10 hundred, 2 July, 2024. You stand relieved as the commanding officer of Marine Corps Installations, National Capital Region, Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia, and are directed to proceed and report to Marine Forces Reserve Force Headquarters Group as the Chief of Staff. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Colonel Jenny A. Colgate, Subject, Assumption of Command. Effective 1001, 2 July 2024, you will assume all duties as the Commanding Officer, Marine Corps Installations, National Capital Region, Marine Corps Base, Quantico, Virginia. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the award presentation. Attention to orders. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Legion of Merit to Colonel Michael L. Brooks, United States Marine Corps, for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding services. Those actions are set forth in the following. Exceptional meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as Commander, Marine Corps Installations Command, National Capital Region, Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia, from June 2021 to July 2024. Throughout this period, Colonel Brooks performed his demanding duties in an exemplary and highly professional manner. Colonel Brooks provided superior leadership and direction to commands, staffs, and tenants supporting the efforts of over 19,000 Marines, sailors, and civilians within the Marine Corps Installations National Capital Region, Marine Corps Quantico Purview. During his tenure, Colonel Brooks successfully oversaw the execution of over $760 million in operations, maintenance, construction sustainment, restoration, and modernization funding spanning four fiscal years. He was instrumental in revamping the installation's table of organization to better support a more efficient and effective workforce. He additionally oversaw the successful execution of multiple Marine Corps marathons and other connected races, where he helped ensure the safety and security of more than 30,000 runners annually, 160,000, 160,000 spectators, 2,500 Marines and sailors, and 6,000 volunteers. Finally, Colonel Brooks focused the organization's efforts on developing collaborative programs that support all Marines and their families' needs, while assigned to the Marine Corps Base Quantico. By his dynamic direction, keen judgment, and loyal dedication to duty, Colonel Brooks reflected credit, great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps in United States Naval Service. Given this third day of April 2024, for the President, Eric M. Smith, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now being escorted into the reviewing area is Mrs. Star Brooks.
United States Marine Corps Commander's Certificate of Appreciation presented to Star Brooks. On the occasion of the change of command of your husband, Colonel Michael L. Brooks, from Marine Corps Installations National Capital Region, Marine Corps Base Quantico, you have earned the Corps' grateful appreciation for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding have made a lasting contribution to your country. The United States Marine Corps and Marine Corps Installations Command. Signed 2 July 2024, David W. Maxwell, Major General, U.S. Marine Corps Commander, Marine Corps Installations Command. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Maxwell. All right, good morning, everybody. Can you, I think this is working. You can hear me back in the back? Okay, good. Welcome to the change of command for Marine Corps Base Quantico, Marine Corps Installations, National Capital Region. Uh, get used to saying that. It's a rather long title. It's, uh, it comes with the job. But, uh, but thank you, everybody that is out here today. We ran through the list of all the distinguished visitors, uh, but I would like to just uh, kind of recognize again the groups, the communities that we are talking about. First of all, there is the senior leadership that we have here in the front row with uh, General Olson, General Heckel, General Glenn, uh, Mr. Adams, Mr. Strobel, senior senior enlisted leadership from really around Marine Corps Base Quantico. Uh, thank you for being here today and to uh, support Marine Corps Base Quantico, MCI, NCR, uh, with your presence here. And I'll come back to the role and the importance of, of your presence here as, as, we, as we go. Uh, again, for senior enlisted leaders that are represented here, uh, you are part of what makes Quantico happen and keep running, and so thank you uh, for that relationship and for being out here to support. Over on the right-hand side, I think we have a number of commanders, not only commanders from on the installation, uh, some of Mike Spears, but also some base and garrison commanders uh, that have come in from Fort Belvoir uh, as well. I know I saw you on the way in, but uh, thank you. That reflects the part of the community that Quantico and anybody in the national capital region here is a part of from a larger perspective. And we also have community partners that are here, uh, represented by uh, General Crenshaw, saw you come in. So from the state of Virginia and representing the, the Veterans Affairs and Veterans Support Organizations, sir, thank you for being here. We have the Marine Corps Heritage, uh, Heritage Foundation, the Marine Corps Association, both of whom are integral to the base and uh, you know, uh, critical activities and support for what happens aboard Marine Corps Base Quantico, but also what happens for the Marine Corps in the larger role and mission that both of you perform. So thank you for, for being here as well. And then, we have our local community leadership that is here and represented and from the uh, the congressional office delegations uh, to the local staffer prince william fauquier county communities uh, thank you for that relationship that you have and and for being here as well to 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 recognize mike's service uh, over the last three years and also to welcome jenny colgate it is, uh, it's really special. Uh, we have many from the Marine Corps Base Quantico team that are also here. He doesn't succeed, she won't succeed without you. And so thank you. And then family and friends of both Mike Brooks and Jenny Colgate. Uh, your presence is what makes this really special for both of them that are sitting up front here, I know. And so, uh, so Star Marie, 
Michaela, uh, for Jenny's parents coming in from Arizona, the three, your th her three boys, uh, you, you are what make them uh, who they are. And so thank you for, thank you for being here as well. Um, you heard the discussion from the narrator about Quantico and what it really means. You know, the first base, the first post that the Marine Corps had built and founded, established in 1801. We, we know it by Marine Barracks, Washington. It took over a hundred years to really get to the next place that was going to become a Marine Corps named location. And that was Marine Corps Base Quantico in 1917. And it took about it took a it took a world war to get to the rest of the a lot of the rest of the bases that happened but when we think about quantico and marine corps base quantico uh, the way i talk the way i look at it this is where the commandant affects his title 10 responsibilities and so the importance of the activities that happen on this installation represented by the leaders that are sitting in the front row here but when the Commandant has responsibilities to man, train, and equip the Marine Corps, that manning is done by Lieutenant General Glenn and DC MNRA. That training is done by Lieutenant General Iams and Training and Education Command. Sully, you were here representing part of that command when on the training side, but represented by them equipping the Marine Corps, Lieutenant General Heckel and Marine Corps Systems Command with developing the designs, the futures, the capabilities, and then producing them and delivering them. So I'm a little biased, but in my perspective, this is where the Commandant does his business for man, train, and equip in his Title X responsibilities. And so it is huge in the relationship that the base supports in enabling those activities to occur and so again gentlemen thank you uh, for being here because you are the reason that quantico really exists and the base is here to provide that support now when we look at support for the base and i look at what's happened over the course of the last three years in mike's tenure it's uh it's pretty impressive first of all uh, just coming out of COVID, bringing the organization out of COVID, uh, resetting to, okay, what does, uh, what does the new post-COVID normal look like? Uh, Mike, Mike was doing that. It started with starting up Marine Corps marathons and going from a virtual environment to, okay, what's the, what's the first in-person one look like? And there was, some, there was some memory that had to get regained in that process and some of those folks are here that went through that uh, to a very successful one last year. It's the Neller Center that just got opened, the Center for War Gaming and, and Development that will be kind of the premier capability for the National Capital Region and for the Marine Corps uh, being able to do that. It is the fact that coming out of COVID, we evacuated out of Afghanistan and. Marine Corps Base Quantico was the one place that the Marine Corps had where we opened our arms and welcomed and played host to Operation uh, Allies Welcome, the, the evacuation of Afghan refugees over on Camp Upshur. And, and Mike, without the base's support, uh, we would not not have been they would not have been able to do that and you delivered on that and uh and so thank you um and then there's uh there's a few other things that are maybe not as not as known uh a few people know them uh, so we we managed mike after uh, after a lot of years uh so well done on closing closing the closing the deal uh, managed to get Lunga Reservoir opened again. And I know I have it on pretty good authority from the, the chief of staff 
that, uh, that I think for at least the first year, it's probably the best fishing in Virginia now that we've gotten it opened after uh, basically 12, 12 years of being closed due to munitions removal that we had to do. And that was no small feat, uh, but, but accomplished and done under your watch. And then as we step in, there are some other things that don't, are not as evident maybe to the, to the military but reflect the installation's role with the community. And so when we think that, you know, over 60% of installation populations, and Quantico's no exception, live off of the installation, our Marines, our families, our community, they're all in the communities. That's where spouses get their jobs. That's where children go to school. And that's where the support often happens uh, for the communities. And so, again, that teamwork is indispensable and invaluable for the success of the installations. And it's reflected, I think, by just the recent accomplishments over the course of the last year, with uh, in particularly with Mike, your investment in the school relationships, with the recognition of mo many of the counties, uh, I think Stafford was big, Fredericksburg schools, in Purple Star recognition in the state of the Virginia. What's that mean? Well, really it's a recognition uh, of the individual school and school district's efforts to pay special attention to the military populations that they serve. And a lot of that happened through the engagements, the support, the interaction uh, that happens behind the scene that, but, but that Mike was doing with the, uh, with the communities, with the school districts, and with the counties. And so I just, as I, as I look back and look back on those three years, it is really amazing uh, kind of where we've come and, and what, you've ma what you've managed to accomplish over the course of these three years, Mike. Now, uh, the work's not done. And, you know, any given day, you're, it's just the beginning of summer. So any given day, you're waking up wondering where the call is gonna come from on air conditioning. Uh, the air conditioning is working in Little Hall, so that's a good thing. Um, but uh, any given day, Jenny, welcome aboard. Uh, <clears throat> so, there is plenty of work to be done. And, and it is going to be keeping the base running, keeping the base operation, operational. There are a bunch of stakeholders in the front row uh, who are incre become incredibly interested in air conditioning uh, as, it, uh, as it affects the critical activities that are occurring uh, as we go. But, but that is not it. Uh, you, you, as you step into this next year, um, we have a couple big things. Next week, NATO Summit and NCR is providing a lot of support for the NATO Summit that will be occurring here just over the course of the next week as we step in past the 4th of July. That's just the warm-up to uh, the next Marine Corps Marathon which will be a warm-up which will be part of then a presidential inauguration in the course of this next year. On all of those, yes, even the presidential inauguration, are just gonna be a warm up to the 250th anniversary of the United States Marine Corps, which I would expect Marine Corps Base Quantico will have some activities planned, scheduled, and, and ready to go. So, Jenny, as you get ready to come in, welcome aboard. You won't be bored. And, uh, and, and we're really happy to have you on the team. Mike, as you and Michaela get ready to head down to uh, Mar 4 Res, you can leave knowing, and, and you will find that as you come in the base and in the gates every now and then in the past, you're gonna, you're gonna look and say, oh, yeah, I started that, or oh, we finished that. And, uh, and there will be a lot of there will be a lot of personal investment and personal meaning that comes back every time you come back to the crossroads of the Marine Corps. 
And so, ladies and gentlemen, without any further uh, ado, let me introduce and pass this mic over to Colonel Mike Brooks. Thank you. So this is what I have to do to get all my favorite people in the same place at the same time. Just throw myself a going away party. I tell you, I should have thought it out a long time ago. Family, friends, distinguished visitors and guests from all over, thank you so much. I know we ran this up against the 4th of July holiday, so your presence here today makes it that much more special. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here and celebrate this with Jenny and I. Um, over the past couple of weeks, we've had some great weather here in, in, in Quantico. We've had, you know, this is the season for changes of command, um, outdoor changes of command. Today is a very beautiful day and we're inside and the HVAC is working. Um, but there's a reason for that. General Maxwell spoke a lot about what it, wh who and what it involves to make this base work properly. and. You know, I needed everybody to be sitting down as I go through this list and give out proper recognition of some of those individuals that are just moving boulders out of the way to make things happen for us. I will try to be as quickly or quick as possible, um, but I'm not making any promises on that because if some of you who know me, I can get a little bit long-winded. But I did, I did break them up into groups to kind of keep it organized. And Sergeant Major said that I will be speaking again at the reception that everyone is invited to upstairs. So um, if I don't get you in this one, please don't hold it against me. I will get you uh, during the reception when we have a little bit of time there to spend together. So before I go any further, you know, I don't want to steal any glory from him. You know, I want to pay all respects to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I serve a, a, a awesome God. And I tell you over the last three years, we have had some conversations together. We have bonded, oh, we have had some conversations and I owe it all to him. He has truly blessed Marine Corps Base Quantico in every way. Usually, um, a lot of times when I speak to folks outside and inside the installation, I always refer to Marine Corps Base Quantico as a village. And I do that on purpose. When we're looking at the Marine Corps, we, we first thing we think about is capabilities. But in a village mindset, it's not every, it's not all about the capabilities, but it's really about those who involve themselves. They, they insert themselves into what needs to be done in, in support of the village. So the people that I want to identify are just those they insert themselves, they make things happen. They are the connectors. And that connection comes in different forms of expertise, skills, and talents that they use and they, they perform. They show up every day. And the first person I wanna recognize is Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Mike Brown, the base Sergeant Major. Where are you at, Sergeant Major? In the background. Sergeant Major, thank you for putting this together. Um, it, it's, it's just superb. Thank you for bringing motivation, good order and discipline um, with your arrival and a whole lot of motivation. Thank you so much. Um, I always often speak to the band and uh, I always tell everybody I have the best, the, the best band in the Marine Corps. And there's a reason why I say that. 45 days uh, upon taking command in 2021, as General Maxwell mentioned, we, ha we got the Afghan mission here to house over 5,000 Afghanistans, Afghans. And the band served as the security augmentation for Marine Corps Base Quantico. They're Marines first. And I will never forget that. You are the best band in the Marine Corps, and I am completely indebted to you forever. Thank you for everything that you do, not just for this base, but throughout the National Capital Region. Thank you so much. Just as special is my Marine Corps Base Quantico Color Guard. 
If you've seen them perform, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They are everywhere. And they are my face. They are the face of Marine Corps Base Quantico. They average four to five funerals a week, and that's not even counting the separate ceremonies that they show up. This is weekends, this is holidays. For a lot of families that are um, putting their loved ones to rest, for a lot of them, it's the first time that they've had inter or they interacted with Marines. And for some of them, it's the last time. They are doing the Marine Corps a, a just a valiant service by showing up and looking sharp and perform, executing their moves exactly the way that we expect Marines to do it. Thank you so much, Color Guard, for what you do. I've also got, uh, I want to recognize um, if Captain Grace Key, uh, United States Navy is here at the base clinic. We don't have um, that subject matter expertise on the base staff, but I tell you, they have never left me alone. From the first day that I got here, we were dealing with COVID. They practically moved into Lejeune Hall to spend with us, to guide me along the, 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 the entire way, giving me just expert advice on how to deal with COVID, the different HP con levels. And Captain Grace Key, if you're here, thank you so much for you and your team, not just on behalf of Marine Corps Base Quantum, but for all our tenant commands, you know, referrals, um, shot X's, everything that you do, thank you. And also Dodea, I wanted to get you out here at first because I didn't want you to get lost, but our relationship, the things that we were able to do together for our kids, not other kids, but our kids, those individuals who live on this space, um, you do it just a, an awesome job. And it was really good partnering with you all. And I will never forget you. And I just really appreciate you just accepting me and welcoming me in and, and we, wow, we did a lot of things. Thank you. Um, General Banta is not here. Um, Brigadier General Connolly is not here, but I also wanted to recognize those gentlemen. General Maxwell, wanted to recognize you, sir. Former commander here. Uh, proximity is right up the road. I know the temptation was great, but I really appreciate you and your team pushing those things back down to us and letting us handle those matters. Thank you so much, sir. To the formal commanders, I don't know if Will Bentley or you and Tammy here. <coughs> Um, thank you so much. Setting the conditions uh, because it was quickly tested again, as I mentioned earlier in 2021 when we got the Afghan mission. Um, thank you for doing that. And also, I didn't want to leave out Joe Murray. Not sure if he's here, but also wanted to give him proper recognition. My 06 fellow peers, commanders, really, I. I I appreciate your patience and understanding, your willingness to understand how BASE operates. Uh, I like to say that we might not be there when you want us to be, but we, we do show up on time. Uh, and I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you having that patience with us. I appreciate your understanding during COVID, you know, with the daily reports, the changing up and down with the HBCon levels. Um, you didn't give me such a hard time, but most importantly, I wanted to thank you for identifying your priorities so me and the team can get after it and make sure that we're taking care of it. So thank you. Uh, Lieutenant General Shirodi, sir. Um, you know, with the MCA organization who just does, I don't, I'm not even sure if there's anyone in the room that, complete, that is completely aware of just how much Marine Corps Association does for us. But sir, just getting to know you better, you know, the coffees, the lunch, your mentorship and your coaching so I really appreciate it. I'm indebted to you. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, former Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Kent, sir. I really appreciate it. Every time you dropped by was a perfect time. Um, also, I appreciate the coaching that you did, that you gave me, the words of encouragement. Uh, it is not lost to me. Thank you, sir, for everything that you do. And thank you for reconnecting me with um, General Con Conway. Uh, <laughs> General Conway was actually my battalion commander uh, in 3rd Battalion, 2nd Marines, and we deployed to Douglas Shield, Desert Storm. Sergeant Major and I were just sitting at the table in the office, and he's like, oh, I didn't know. I was telling him a story. I'm getting lost in here, but I was telling Sergeant Major a story, and he just dialed him up, and I was able to give, uh, have about a 10-minute conversation. So I really appreciate that, Sergeant Major. General Sullivan, sir, um, inspect what you expect. Um, when I think of you, that's what I, that's what I think of, sir. 
Uh, from the very first time that you and Mrs. Sullivan came on deck and um, I was in the welcome aboard brief, I turned around and you and Mrs. Sullivan just sitting on the front row. You're the only general that, that did that and I appreciate it, sir. In addition to, you know, our walk around, you identifying your priorities help us keep us focused on what we needed to do for OCS, TBS, and Weapons Training Battalion. So, sir, I really appreciate your leadership. Mrs. Sullivan, ma'am, thank you. Um, your engagement with the base is just incredible. Um, please, and you and I have talked, I know that you're gonna continue that, but your involvement with the families, the Marines, um, well, just service members here, getting involved and ensuring that you're looking out for their best interests, teaming up with medical, with our MCCS behavioral health folks in order to put these programs on for, for, for the, and they're, they're top notch programs. Ma'am, thank you for all you can do. General Lukeman, sir, thank you for coming. Um, it has just been a pleasure working with you and the team and, um, getting the museum conveyed back over where it belongs. Um, it, sir, in our conversations, I really appreciate it, Liz. Thank you. The USO, Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, MCCS team, all of those organizations that just on a daily basis improve the quality of life for the Marines, service members, and their families here. Uh, words cannot describe just what kind of impact you all have had on this installation from the Afghans all the way till today, you are always doing something, you are always involved in our lives, and you have made our lives better for it. Thank you. General Olson, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I, I thank you because, you know, I look at you, you know, you don't, you don't contact me every week, but you do contact me, and when you do, it's very meaningful. You, you're my extra eyes and ears on this installation, sir. And, you know, when there's credit to be given, you're the first person to do it. And I know that you don't see the Marines' reactions when you're sending them letters or you're sending them kudos via email, but it just makes their day everything. And they're walking around with their chest poked out, and they're very proud. And, sir, I just, you know, just appreciate you just being involved in Marine Corps Base Quantico. And to your lovely bride, thank you, ma'am. Um, this might be our last time that we're neighbors. That's an inside joke. Um, but thank you for bringing, you know, and sharing the Garden Club with everyone who's, who wants to be involved. Thank you so much. And then for my staff, the workhorses, the one who has to tolerate me. And I want to start with um, Deputy Chief Simons. Are you here? Always in the background. I owe you a debt. And, um, your leadership from the front is very much appreciated, sir. Um, you have filled in some tremendous holes that we had. You have mentored a lot of provost marshals, um, and you've mentored them the correct way. And Marine Corps Base Quantico is that much safer because of your personal involvement and dedication and commitment to us. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Rick Shrugs, are you, are you here in the house? Sir, you know, bringing you from Okinawa uh, was the best decision that I think that I made um, with the help of Richard Pringle. But, sir, you have just, you're, since your arrival, the base has just changed in appearance and the way that we operate and maintenance. And um, I owe you a debt of gratitude as well. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And also for my uh, public works officer, Commander Warren. Um, Again, just right there, we're eyeball to eyeball with Commander's intent. Ms. Anson, Mrs. Anson, thank you for everything that you do. You, uh, you're you able to hear me vent in a way that no, probably no one else but Star uh, gets to hear. But I really appreciate you and your leadership of the staff rounding them up and ensuring that they're doing things the right way. So thank you so much. Brian Murtha, um, Nancy Mormon, I'm just gonna name off because I'm getting a little long-winded. Jamie Flynn, the MCCS Ultimate CFO, um, school liaisons Penny and Kimberly. Um, your engagement with the, our surrounding communities is just, uh, words just cannot express just how valuable that is. You make sure that I was connected to the community. You make sure that I was aware of what the 
challenges were for our students that are going to school out in town and building a very positive relationship with uh, the school board, school superintendents and the staff out there. Again, a debt of gratitude. Thank you so much. Ms. Parissa Featherson, Ms. Hester, uh, Mr. Maneri, I'm not sure if you're here. Mr. Maneri works in the G1. I just wanna publicly recognize his efforts for turning our quarterly civilian um, award ceremonies around to really make it feel special um, the way that it should be and make our civilian Marines feel appreciated. G17, you know, our liaison to our surrounding communities, our G18 who works magic with, with funding or the lack thereof. Um, but at the end of the day, we always have enough to pay for what we need to pay for. All right, hang in there with me. I'm almost done. Surrounding communities, I, I won't say much here. I would save it for, for the reception, but Stafford County, um, Prince William County, you all have opened the doors to your neighborhoods, your businesses, your churches, and your schools for us. You are proud, you are dedicated, you are loyal to your military base, and I'm just, um, just very proud to have been a part of everything that you have offered and done for us. Uh, Supervisor Bailey, um, I gotta give you a special shout out because you know, we met early on in 2021, and ma'am, you showed up every day and you didn't show up by yourself. You always brought your team with you. Um, there's probably a hundred things that folks that work and live on this space will never know the kind of impact that you've had on this space. But I recognize it, my team recognizes it. And ma'am, you are very much appreciated for your involvement with Marine Corps Base Quantico. You have, you have just owned it and your partnership and even your friendship has gone a long ways and it doesn't get past me, ma'am. I know that's hard work, but uh, it is a very much appreciated. Thank you so much. And then my last group is my family. Michaela, um, I've watched you grow from a little girl to a, a, just a beautiful young woman. I am extremely proud of you for everything that you've accomplished. I'm really, I'm just a proud papa. When you look at me, you never make me feel guilty. Even when I miss donuts with dad in the third grade, I will never forget that. I felt so bad about it. But that also goes a long ways. Um, you understand what I have to do and you never make me feel guilty about it. I love you and I look forward to watching you grow even more and achieve all your goals that you want in life. To my beautiful wife, star Maria Del Carmen Brooks, I love you. I know I don't bring work home with me to discuss over the table like you wanted to, but you recognize that when things are on my mind, you give me the time, you give me the space to kind of work that out. Um, that goes a long ways. Um, you were put in my life for a reason, and I'm sure I'm just so blessed that God put you in my life. Um, sometimes I wonder what that reason is. But at the end of the day, you're there to remind me. But I, I just wanted to let you know that everything that I do, babe, I do it for to make you proud of me. You make me a better man and you also make me a better Marine. I love you. I did forget one person and that's uh, Secretary Crenshaw, sir. Um, <clears throat> you know, I remember when you, when you came on board and one of the things that you said to all the installation commanders in the Commonwealth was, I just don't want this VMAC to be a form of discussion. I want action to take place. And sir, under your leadership, that I've seen it. I've seen action take place. I've seen how you and the, and the governor have advocated for all the installations, for military families, and sir, that is, I, I, I credit that to you and your leadership and everything that you're able to do. So thank you, sir. And so Jenny, I'm gonna get off the stage, but you are not just getting a, a professional staff. You are also getting a very professional, a very dedicated and loyal community that goes along with it. 
and they will do anything that, that this space needs. You just need to point in the direction. So congratulations. Um, of course, I'm available if you ever need me, but I know that you got it and you're gonna take it to even higher, higher heights. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody. All right, my kids are giving me that look, so I will be short. <laughs> All right, first, before I forget, thank you to Mike and Star for leaving me this incredible installation. I will soon learn all the work that went into it, but I will be thanking you for the next three years. Um, distinguished guests, um, fellow commanders, service members, because I have my coasties right here in the front, um, civilians, family, and friends. I am, tr thank you for joining um, Colonel Brooks and I on this truly special day. Um, I am incredibly honored to have been selected for this opportunity to, to lead this unique and diverse base that we call the Crossroads of the Marine Corps. Now I will tell you, 25 years ago when I was going through officer candidate school and the basic school, I did not say, someday I will command this base. I was laying in my rack saying, please don't let me get lost in the woods tomorrow. So this is a new arena for me, but I am truly honored. So before I began turnover last week with Mike, I felt pretty comfortable coming into this. I thought, you know, it's been a few years. I've been at a couple bases and installations. Um, I've commanded 100 submarines, and even in my last job in the IG, I had nine civilians. And then I got this brochure here on Fast Facts of Quantico and uh, read it and said, oh, 58,000 acres, oh, 10,000 civilians, kind of in comparison to my nine. Um, and then, more importantly, we have six endangered species. I am going to be laying awake at night worried about the northern long-eared bat. I, 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 I truly am concerned. I don't know what to do with that. Um, but I would like to say thank you to Sergeant Major Mike Brown and his wife, Melanie. If you have not met them, they truly are a powerhouse. Thank you for the warm welcome, and I look forward to uh, leading this space with you. Um, thank you to the staff um, and Brooke for putting this ceremony together. Master Arn, thank you very much. Thank you to the band for making today truly special. Thank you to all the staff. I know I've met less than a quarter of you, um, but you have set a very high bar for me. Um, you have been nothing but professional, true experts in your field, and I truly look forward to working with all of you uh, for the next three years. Um, to my friends, um, <laughs> you don't know how much uh, I value your friendship. Um, I know. Thanks. So many of these in the front row I've met through sports. Um, they have been surrogate parents to my kids <laughs> on all those long nights of baseball and football and everything else. So thank you for those of you that have traveled from far to be here um, to my parents. I knew I wouldn't get through this. Um, Thank you for coming from Arizona and uh, always being there for me. And to my boys who are laughing at me right now. <laughs> um, huge personalities with these three, even bigger hearts. Um, minimal complaining, I will say, throughout all the moves, um, but truly the best bunch of boys that I could ever ask for. So thank you. And lastly, to our community partners, I truly look forward to forging the bonds and continuing the relationships that have been built over the years and making them even stronger. So thank you to everybody and um, Simper Fidelis. At this time, flowers are being delivered to Colonel Brooks' wife, Star, for her love and support over the years. Michaela for being such an incredible daughter 
and to Mrs. Brooke Anson as a token of his appreciation for her unwavering dedication to duty on the command deck. Flowers are also being delivered to Colonel Colgate's mother, Mrs. Jean Willett, for her love and support throughout her career. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of Anchors Away and the singing of the Marines hymn. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the Commander, Marine Corps Installations Command, thank you for your attendance. Please join Colonel Brooks and Colonel Colgate upstairs for the reception. <laughs>